what is your Bitcoin investment thesis in 2024? Could you list every single big reason why you think Bitcoin's price is going up? Bitcoin Brandon Green in this video lists every single reason why Bitcoin price is about to skyrocket. Bitcoin is going to be a major theme of this upcoming presidential election. There is nothing now that the rest of crypto can do that Bitcoin can't also do. I think there's going to be maybe one major micro strategy copycat in every market. The macro climate is setting up perfectly for Bitcoin price to see crazy levels. Think about it. There has been no easement of monetary policy. We're still in very tight conditions and yet we're at all time highs. The monetary policy of the United States is going to loosen over the next few months, especially heading into the presidential election. There will be pressure from the executive branch to print more money and pump the stock market and make everyone feel rich again. That's going to affect Bitcoin in a major way, and it's going to pump it to crazy levels. You aren't bullish enough. All of these trends are happening right now. It's a crazy moment for Bitcoin. Right now, it's almost like Bitcoin is succeeding in spite of the macro headwinds. Those headwinds are going to turn into tailwinds, and this is going to be maybe the craziest cycle we've ever seen in Bitcoin's history. So how high could Bitcoin's price reach? Brandon Green here in this video lays out his bear case, base case, and bull case. Smash the like button, post this video on social media. More people need to see this. Let's get into it. Bitcoin Brandon. Brandon Green of Bitcoin Magazine, or more precisely, Bitcoin Conference, right now here to promote Bitcoin Nashville conference, July 25th through 27th. Use code altcoin daily for 10% off tickets. Details below. Come hang out with both of us in Nashville. Brandon, Bitcoin's still less than $100,000 today. Can you believe it? Yeah, I mean, I can believe it, but uh, I don't think it's going to be here much longer. Uh, I think, you know, we're, we're getting ready for the next leg up and it's going to blast us straight through 100K. Give me your best guess. Bitcoin hits 100K by the summer of 2024 or by the winter of 2024? Best guess. Nobody knows the future. No one knows. I would say certainly by the end of 2024. But uh, I think this summer, you know, there could be some some uh, macro tailwinds that cause Bitcoin to just crash right through it pretty quickly. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's jump into it. What is your Bitcoin investment thesis in 2024? Could you list every single big reason why you think Bitcoin's price is going up? Wow. Every, every single big reason. I mean, there's, there's a ton. Uh, uh, let's, let's start with a few of them. Okay. Number one, I think crypto is finally being absorbed by Bitcoin. Okay. So Bitcoin, obviously with ordinals, with Bitcoin native assets springing up, you got taproot asset that's being built right now by lightning labs. There is nothing now that the rest of crypto can do that Bitcoin can't also do. And so what I anticipate happening over the next you know, months and years is the programmability of the Bitcoin network to rival that of Ethereum or Solana. And so that means that I think a lot of the, the market cap of those L1s will be absorbed back into Bitcoin. I think that's a, a huge trend and, and one that's really just started. Number two, you know, I would say that like the monetary policy of the United States has been fascinating to watch as you look at this new cycle coming. There has been no easement of monetary policy. We're still in very tight conditions and yet we're at all time highs. And so if anything, the monetary policy of the United States is going to loosen over the next few months, especially heading into the presidential election. There will be pressure from the executive branch to, let's say, print more money and, and pump the stock market and make everyone feel rich again. And so that's going to affect Bitcoin in a major way, and, and it's going to pump it to crazy levels in and of itself. I would also say, you know, it's interesting to watch these international Bitcoin hubs forming. Obviously, El Salvador is an interesting one to continue to watch. The UAE is, is a fascinating market. You know, I know I saw you over in Dubai earlier this year. That's a country that is absolutely embracing Bitcoin and crypto very, very strongly. And I think that there's a lot of incentives for them to be major players in the market. And that comes along with major investment into Bitcoin. The next one, ETFs. So the ETFs are just starting to be felt in the Bitcoin price. You know, either we're just starting to see the first few disclosures of a couple of hedge funds all dipping their toes into Bitcoin just a little bit. We haven't even seen the, the rampant buying that you're going to see later in this cycle when people are FOMOing into Bitcoin. So think of that as kind of a table setting 
of what's to come later and just how high this market could get in this next cycle. And then, you know, the last thing I would say is geopolitical ramifications around Bitcoin. You know, U.S.-China tensions are increasing. There are tons of countries around the world that are looking at Bitcoin in a geopolitical sense and trying to figure out what their currency policy should be in a world in which like they can't really pick one side or the other between U.S. and China and treasury assets are much more fraught. So all of these trends are happening right now. It's a crazy moment for Bitcoin. And so I think that like this year and next year are going to become where right now it's almost like Bitcoin is succeeding in spite of the macro headwinds. Those headwinds are going to turn into tailwinds. And this is going to be maybe the craziest cycle we've ever seen in Bitcoin's history. Interesting. Do you think that the, you know, a large part of demand from these Bitcoin ETFs is still ahead of us? Because we've already seen much success in this catalyst that has already happened. The launch of that. yeah, I mean, I, I've seen uh, estimates of like let's say maybe ten to eleven billion in net inflows into the ETFs when you like count grayscale outflows plus inflows. Uh, you know, like it it hits that number, so it's that's a low number. I mean, if you think about like what the tr total addressable market is, I want to say RIAs in and of themselves could be a hundred billion dollar kind of uh, inflow if they're allocating certain percentages. And so, you know, that's just one example of inflows that haven't really taken off yet. You know, Kathy Wood was on CNBC earlier this year talking about when are these institutions, these pension funds, these hedge funds, these kind of more, let's say, high inertia, difficult to move sort of groups that have massive amounts of money to invest, like when are they going to move, right? And her answer was, you know, not only are they going to wait to see how the ETFs shake out, they're also going to wait for the right investment thesis around getting into it. And they're going to have to decide which ETF to pick. And that in and of itself is actually a very involved decision. And so, you know, it takes a while for some of these, you know, massive ships to start t steering into the direction of Bitcoin. Once that happens, these are not day traders. These are not, you know, funds that are jumping in and jumping out and, trying to flip a, a quick buck. Like this is going to be a pipe into Bitcoin and that's going to be felt in short order. And as you get later in the cycle and there's fewer Bitcoin available because everyone's speculating to the upside, it's going to cause massive runups and massive bubbles because there's just so much money coming into the system right now. Why haven't we seen more companies or people like Michael Saylor? Are there going to be more micro strategies putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, there's a, a company that just announced out of Japan. I want to say this is less than a month ago. They're called MetaPlanet. And I would consider them to be the first official, you know, micro strategy copycat. They are trying to do in the Japanese market what Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy have done in the US market. And honestly, it's a brilliant play. It's let's take a little bit of diversified, uncorrelated cash flow from a regular business and utilize that in order to get debt, to take out debt and buy Bitcoin with it. And these capital markets, especially in Japan, Japan's basically still in QE infinity. I mean, it's still almost free to borrow money in Japan. And so it is so easy to borrow at low rates, buy Bitcoin with it, and then later use the appreciation against the Japanese yen to pay off the debt. And so I think there's going to be maybe one major micro strategy copycat in every market, every currency market. You know, it's not the first one that really causes the waterfall. It's the second one. It's the one that kind of validates the first one's thesis and induces the FOMO as everyone sees the copycats coming. So MetaPlanet is like a major shot around the world, in my opinion. And I think we're going to see many more of those companies springing up over the next year. And then we're seeing so many businessmen or like companies like MetaPlanet or MicroStrategy or even like, you know, funds like Larry Fink and Kathy Wood. It seems to me that probably people like that, I would just assume, changed Donald Trump's mind. I just, you know, bring up the fact that this is the first time that in a presidential election, a candidate, a former president says, I'm a big Bitcoin crypto believer. And it seems to be like a, a real issue. G give me your thoughts on the fact that Bitcoin is in the atmosphere for this presidential election. Yeah. So, you know, I think that 
I've been having conversations behind the scenes. We don't have to get into that right now, but uh, Bitcoin is going to be a major theme of this upcoming presidential election. And uh, one thing of note, like an interesting fact that let's say has caught the eye of the Donald Trump campaign, especially, was that the crypto industry in 2020 voted 60-40 in favor of Biden. And what has happened since then has been four years of hostile administration towards our industry. And so that is very much a voter base that is there for the taking. If you were to present a more positive and a more collaborative administration, uh, and, and so you know any candidate is going to be receptive to that feedback. I think that's why you've seen RFK early on be very bold and embracing Bitcoin and crypto. And you know I think that you also have to look at the amount of Americans that own Bitcoin. It's it's greater than fifty million, getting to a hundred million. I was talking to a policy person from the industry earlier yesterday. And he said that there was a poll that they had found that was either one in four or one in five voters in swing states said that Bitcoin and crypto would help decide which candidate they would vote for. Okay, that is inignorable data. You cannot ignore that as a candidate. And so it is absolutely going to be a sledgehammer to some of this hurtful and harmful policy that we've seen over the past four years, like that's going to melt away in quick, quick order. And you can already see that with the SEC changing its tune on the ETH ETF. I think that's a massive moment for, you know, ETH, especially they're clearly getting pressured to melt away. So yeah, like this, this is the beginning of a massive trend. And I think that instead of the U S being a hostile administration to Bitcoin and crypto, it's about to just run in reverse really hard. Yeah, that's interesting. That was big unknown. Would they approve a, a spot Ethereum ETF or just how, how are they going to treat crypto? And it seems like the fact that they're treating crypto, okay, that, that'd be good for Bitcoin, I would assume. I take the Bitcoiner lens on this. You know, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin winning via state action and regulatory burden. Like I want these ideas to compete in the free market. And so uh, I'm a strong believer that Bitcoin, you know, I said this in my my earlier statement about like, what are the macro tailwinds for Bitcoin? One of them is that I believe that Bitcoin is going to get a larger market share of the entire crypto market over this next cycle. Like, I think that Bitcoin will outcompete these other layer ones, but I don't want Bitcoin to outcompete them because a hostile regulatory regime is preventing people from interacting with decentralized open systems. I want it to outcompete these other L1s because it's a better system. It's more robust. It's harder to censor. It's harder to attack. And it's a, a better user experience. And there's cool ideas being built on it. So that's why I see Bitcoin outcompeting. And so seeing some of that regulatory burden and overhang go away is ultimately bullish for Bitcoin because it's, it's bullish for the entire industry. So let's talk about cycle Bitcoin price predictions. Brandon, I want to hear your base case for Bitcoin in the context of this cycle, either end of this year, sometime throughout 2025, or maybe very beginning of 2026. This is what we're talking about when I say the cycle. This is the time frame. What is your like low case? Like, I mean, Bitcoin at least gets to this minimum. What is your, is that the base case? What is your mid case? And then what is your bull case? Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm known as being quite the bull. But I'm generally right, okay? You know, uh, let me just say, I, I don't miss these bold predictions by too much. What you've seen over the past few cycles in Bitcoin is a 100x from the bottom, okay? The one major exception was this past cycle. I think if you look at this past cycle, there was too much funny business happening when it came time for the true blow off top. You had China banning Bitcoin, you had Elon flipping on the market, and then you had uh, uh, massive amounts of credit in the system. And, you know, what turned out to be like a, a fake supply created by FTX and Alameda that were basically running a Ponzi on Bitcoin, you know, and creating circulation credit that was never going to be resolved. And so what I think happened is we got cheated out of a true bull run in this past cycle. Uh, so could it have been another 100x from the bottom? That would have required it to go to like a 300, 350k price per Bitcoin uh, as a cycle top. Maybe that would have happened. Hard to say, hard to say. But if we were going to take a 100x from the bottom of this cycle, well, the bottom was 15,500, I believe, uh, uh, in November of 2022. And so uh, 100x would be $1.5 million per Bitcoin. 
let me put that as like the top case, you know, that's the the bull case. Uh, but I think it's, it's definitely on the table. I mean, dude, BlackRock has a Bitcoin ETF, you know, like uh, uh, there is nothing that can get too crazy at this point in terms of money coming into Bitcoin. I would say my base case, like what I would hope to see is I want Bitcoin to eclipse gold market cap. And that happens at roughly a $650,000 per Bitcoin price. And so, you know, I would hope to see that, like that would be my, my, this is what I think is going to happen. This is my base case. And then for a bear case, if we really just don't see the liftoff and we have to like truly change the way in which we look at how Bitcoin is adopted and the Bitcoin price is affected during a cycle, I would say a top around like 250 to 350 K would be like, okay, you know, we had some liftoff, but we didn't get to what I think we could have accomplished, which is to eclipse gold. So that would be my bear case. Still a solid four-ish X from here, you know, plenty of room to run. But man, I'm going to be disappointed if that's all we do. Do you think it's crazy if somebody thinks you're crazy for that being your bear case? If somebody goes 250K is your bear case, you must be crazy. Like, what would you say to that person? I would say you haven't been paying attention. Like, uh, we're, we're not here for linear returns and, you know, great investment pat on your back. You know, you, you, uh, you manage to make a little money this cycle. We're here for a revolution. And that means Bitcoin absorbing and reconstructing the financial system, period. And in order to do that, in order to absorb the global financial system, we got to go much higher than this. So buckle up. That's what we're here for. That's the mission. And that means that uh, we've got some craziness left to, to ride through. Can't wait. I appreciate that, man. Brandon, thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to link your stuff below and link Bitcoin Nashville, July 25th through 27th below. Hopefully people are hanging out with us there. Final thoughts for the Altcoin Daily audience about yourself, what you're doing, Bitcoin Nashville, whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, you know, we throw, I think, the best party in Bitcoin, maybe in all of crypto. Certainly, we've got the biggest event in the world happening in Nashville. And so, if you are interested in Bitcoin, if you're interested in crypto, we're going to convince you to be more interested in Bitcoin, you know, if you come to our events. So just prepare for that. But uh, we focus on Bitcoin. But Bitcoin is king, and that's why. This is going to be an event you cannot miss. We are attempting to make history with this event. There are things that, you know, maybe we were talking about a little bit before the show that I can't say yet publicly, but we're shooting for the moon in terms of what we think we can accomplish at Bitcoin 2024. So come be part of it, come be part of history, come be part of the biggest event in the world. You're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to get a job if you want a job. You're going to meet clients if you want to meet clients. You're going to find out about the latest trends in Bitcoin, which are fascinating. And we didn't get even into like Bitcoin native assets and all of that. But there's so much to learn. It's so much fun. And Nashville is an amazing city. So uh, come hang. Let's have some fun together. Appreciate that, man. Can't wait. And yeah, you were telling me some of the stuff that is unconfirmed or unannounced at this point, and it's already going to be great, this conference. And But like, if some of this stuff happens that you're you know shooting for, really shooting for the moon, it's going to be epic. So you definitely want to be there and be part of history. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you so much. Great to see you.